Hi guys. Well, after that spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful day yesterday, here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, here it is, another rainy, gloomy, depressing, collapsing Sunday morning in the collapse. That would be Sunday, November 27th, 2022. So as some of you who, uh, did see my video yesterday about this outfit that I've gotten involved in called medium.com. No, I have stumbled in, in, into the biggest cornucopia of Doomer porn that I have ever discovered in my life. And uh, <laughs> so my guess is pretty much every week I will be bringing you my doomsday sermon will be a an essay that I found from writers that I do know and voices that I'm just now learning and trying to share with you and get their voices out there. And one more time, if you missed my video last night, just say this is an unabashed commercial, you can go on medium.com, I think, for the next day or two, uh, and get one year of unlimited access uh, on medium.com, usually $50 for $25 a year, or seven cents a day. You can go on medium.com and find thousands and thousands of uh, Good Lord, essays on everything, uh, including uh, collapse and doom and gloom, unbelievably. So uh, I'm just going to give you a taste of what I have found. I have probably read 40 or 50 essays. And so to kick off my first medium.com uh, doomsday, Sunday doomsday sermon, not counting all the Umer hack uh, sermons from medium.com. We're going to go check out this fellow. I can't remember if I even recognize this. This guy's name sounds vaguely familiar. His name is Richard Lowenthal. Richard Lowenthal, and I am his 531st follower. Richard describes himself as a former counselor, whatever that means, and current diligent observer of our socio-political scene, I celebrate the spirit and reason and try to connect the dots in my writing. And so what we are, what I am going to read from today is his, uh, essay. This first, this is part one of a three-part essay. He has added two more essays, and I don't know how many more he has to go. Uh, so I'm going to give you a sample of uh, Richard Lowenthal and what you can expect to find on medium.com with, again, part one of, of so far three essays. How close are we, really, to societal collapse? Hmm. Our persistent delusional belief systems are leading to social and ecological catastrophe. And so, guys, this is a long, uh, a long sermon. And so I am going, not because it's necessarily bad. I mean, there's some interesting stuff in the first half of this. So uh, you can join medium.com and read the first half of this essay and his two, uh, his part two and part three. But what I'm going to do is come in about the halfway mark where he finally answers the question posed in the title about how close are we really to societal collapse according to Richard Lowenthal. Take it away, Richard. <clears throat> 
think about it, our modern industrial and technological societies, societies have only existed for the past couple of centuries, and mainly just the most recent century since the early 1900s. Yet, in that brief time span, our societies have conquered the planet and greatly damaged the planetary ecosphere upon which all life depends. This is C-R-A-Z-Y and utterly unsustainable. <clears throat> so, my conclusion about the underlying ideas and beliefs that create and sustain our modern societies is this. They are not accurate, they're not realistic. They are destructive and they simply don't work from either a social or ecological point of view. We desperately need a major paradigm shift, an expanded vision and understanding of life and reality. And in this, my friends, I and the New Agers were all correct. We were right. <coughs> Yet, these destructive ideas and belief systems persist and persist. Clearly, they do work for some of us, or they would not exist and be so strongly promoted. And I would say that the small portion of humanity that these ideas do work for is the group of uber-wealthy, parasitic human beings at the very top of the global wealth pyramid. And, and guys, I'm just going to break in here. It's probably what I'm going to do every Sunday just because I am sharing a doomsday sermon does not mean that I 100% agree with every single word uh, that I that I read on my selections each Sunday. Now I I do agree with Richard here that these uber wealthy human parasites at the top of the global wealth pyramid are the first ones that need to go. Okay. But uh, I, I share the, uh, I spread the blame out a little more than Richard probably does because I am not a new ager. Anyway, just had to have that little amplification and clarification. Back to Richard. <clears throat> what is happening around the world right now? is that our dysfunctional social and economic systems based on erroneous, antisocial, and outdated socioeconomic concepts are colliding head on with the actual social and natural realities that surround and unfold and enfold us. These ruthless and parasitic people use their vast funds to manipulate and control the social narrative, primarily promoting their own self-serving ideas that they and others utilize to prop up our current socioeconomic systems. Moronic ideas like the horrid trickle-down economic theory that shunts the wealth that workers produce into the hands of a tiny, greedy elite, who then will supposedly and generously toss the rest of us some nice financial crumbs. Even further, I would say that this amoral, ruthless, robber elite encourages the antisocial ideal of constant competition. The belief that there is not enough wealth or stuff to go around, so we all must viciously compete against each other to get ahead 
or perhaps even survive, they want us to believe it is, quote, every man for himself, close quote, in life, and that cooperation and practical joint efforts with others are dangerous and lead to that horrible bugaboo gasp, socialism. Of course, all of these ideas and belief systems support the current system as is and greatly benefit the uber-wealthy elites who work tirelessly to push these antisocial ideas and ensures their acceptance and overwhelming influence. It's yet another super successful version of divide and conquer. Yes, indeed, ideas rule the human world. I would also say that unless and until the mass of humanity rises up, claims and utilizes its inherent power and works together to create a much fairer, more egalitarian economic and social system. For example, democratic socialism, the same old dysfunctional, greed-driven systems will continue to dominate our social worlds and undermine or destroy the natural world that sustains us and all life. And guys, again, just because I am reading something uh, does not mean uh, I agree with every word, any system that ends in ism, okay? We all know what capitalism is doing to the planet, but uh, I I anyway, I'm not going to go and to look at all of the other isms and uh, you know, go to any country on this planet being guided by an ism and look at the environmental degradation going on in this planet. It makes no difference which ism uh, you act like it, it, it is going to save this planet. There is no economic system that is going to save this planet. It is any economic system destroying the planet. <coughs> but anyway, this is Richard Lowenthal's sermon, not Sam Mitchell's. Back to Richard. Okay, so get to the point. <clears throat> Societal collapse is already well underway. At this point, finally, I can address the question posed in the title of this article. How close are we really to societal collapse? Since the dominant powers that be have little or no interest in changing anything because the current systems work quite well for them. What is happening around the world right now is that our dysfunctional and social and economic systems based on erroneous antisocial and outdated socio-economic concepts are colliding head on with the actual social and natural realities that, sur that surround and enfold us. As I think he just said uh, <clears throat> a couple of paragraphs ago. Oh, I got to figure, oh, I see what's going on. I'm, I'm getting used to the format here. So anyway, so I won't read. I get it. All right, moving on. <clears throat> Our current highly dysfunctional system, including our sustained attack, and that is what it amounts to on our natural world, as well as the ridiculous, unconscionable levels of wealth inequality all around the world, are now, are now colliding, bam, 
with the nasty mushrooming effects of the wildly unfair and destructive systems are producing in our societies and in the larger world of nature. And in case it isn't already obvious, I will just point out in any long-term conflict between human greed and activities and the larger world of nature, in the end, in the end, nature always wins. Uh, but of course, nature is going to lose a hell of a lot of the battles. So far, nature is losing a lot more battles uh, than it's winning. There are going to be no winners. In 10 million years, uh, nature can be declared the winner. Uh, you know, by the time we drive ourselves extinct, uh, we're going to have taken down all our fellow earthlings, so nobody is going to win this game, guys. As I say, in 10 million years, maybe we can declare a winner. Anyway, this whole nature always wins, nature bats last, all of this crap. Anyway, uh, back to Richard's sermon. Sure, our ostentatious, crazed consumer society looked quite successful for a time, but our short-term success is now ending fast and being exposed as the superficial, destructive sham that it is. Meanwhile, the natural world itself is going crazy due to our massive, continual interference and is getting ever more imbalanced and more actively hostile to human endeavors. Then we've got angry, disappointed masses of Westerners, Americans, Brits, Italians, Swedes, Hungarians, etc., who are fed up with the lies and excesses and excuses of their current systems and are increasingly turning to the latest, more comforting lies and propaganda spouted by rising demagogues and fascists around the globe. Same continuing problems, new deceptive, uh, deceptive illusions and lies. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss, as they who put it in their famed rock anthem, won't get fooled again. We shall see about that. All over the world, social and economic pressures are mounting, and the gaping cracks and holes in our current systems are widening, expanding, and becoming ever more obvious and dangerous. And simultaneously, the multiple dangers posed by climate change, extreme drought and floods, more violent storms, disruption of climatic and growing patterns, rising sea levels, and major disruptive impacts on our economies are also expanding and becoming more frequent and intense. So again, how close are we? really to societal collapse. I am afraid that the realistic, fact-based answer at this point is, drum roll please, we are very close and descending ever further into collapse mode as time goes on. Fact. Even if we turned our carbon burning economies completely around tomorrow and suddenly switched to totally 
green energy sources, the excess CO2 and other greenhouse gases we have already released into our atmosphere would ensure that climate change and global warming continues to escalate for at least another one to two decades minimum. And by then, the collapse of our natural ecosystems and other social and economic systems will be much further along and much more catastrophic. I agree with Umer Hack. All right, with fellow medium.com writer Umer Hack. I agree with Umer Hack and other so-called alarmists that we are now entering a time of worldwide societal collapse and restructuring. It's much needed, it's inevitable now, and we damn well should be alarmed since it is happening as we speak. The thing is though, that we're not talking about a discrete event or a sudden, oh shit, moment of horror, or even several such events or moments, though these are likely to occur also. Rather, societal collapse takes place gradually in an escalating series of small, painful changes, losses, and disruptions. It's not an event or several events. It is an intensifying, ongoing process, a gradually worsening, accelerating series of downward spirals. In truth, we are already in its early stages and how we respond to intensifying collapse will determine how or even whether humanity survives and finds new, better ways to thrive on planet Earth, our one and only beautiful, irreplaceable home. And then uh, again, he that, that's just, uh, he, he just breaks there, takes a breath, uh, and comes back with parts two and part three. Uh, and you can find more of his breakdown of, uh, breakdown of the breakdown in parts two and three and uh, all sorts of other writings from Richard Lowenthal and of course, Umer Hack. Uh, and all sorts of other folks. And who knows, <clears throat> I am actually uh, toying with the crazy idea that uh, the former, the former uh, journalist and writer Sam Mitchell uh, is going to brush off his dusty pen and uh, Good Lord, when did I quit my journalism career to go into being a clueless real estate agent? That was in 1986. Now, uh, I have written a couple of books since then uh, that are out there somewhere with about 10 readers on a planet of 8 billion people. But who knows? We shall see right now. Uh, I'm gonna get out there and what? I was hoping to be siding an outhouse today. I think my outhouse is gonna have to go without sides and a roof on it for another day. Get out there and side an outhouse while well, you still can because uh, outhouses are on their way back. Bye guys.